Good morning. It is Wednesday, May 13th. Uh, last night, I came across a term that was new to me, uh, the greater fool. Uh, it was the, the name of a, a TV show, an episode I was watching. Uh, a character in that show was upset because all his peers were allowing themselves to be quoted in an article. And they were saying things like, oh yeah, that guy's crazy. And you know, he's, he's trying to do too much and he's over the top. And basically they considered him a fool. Uh, that was the, the name of the article in this uh, fictional story, this episode. And uh, by the end of the show, someone explains to him that, you know, being a greater fool uh, is a compliment. And, you know, he's like, what does that mean? And the way it was defined for him is the greater fool is someone with the perfect blend of self-delusion and ego to think he can succeed where others have failed. This whole country was built by greater fools. Which is kind of a fun idea to think, you know, oh, being a, a fool isn't a bad thing. It's, it's almost like a brave thing to do. And this morning, as I, pre as I prepare to preach uh, for this evening, I came across the part of a text that's being included is from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Uh, one of the ideas that Paul plays with in this letter to the Corinthians to make his point is foolishness versus wisdom. It, it comes up a, a few different times throughout the letter. And in the text for tonight, it says the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Later, Paul tells the Corinthians to be, he goes out and says, be fools for Christ which has been a curious phrase to me before. As I'm reading it uh, again now, it's a wonder that there are no Fool's Lutheran Church. Maybe there, I, I haven't looked it up, but I think that'd be a great name for a church in 2020 and beyond, Fool's Lutheran. Where do you go? I go to Fool's Lutheran. Oh, that sounds interesting, right? Because Paul's talking about the same kind of fool as I saw in my TV show last night, someone with so much faith, hope, and love that they see, hear, and believe where others gave up long ago, where others became cynical long ago. And I find that to be a really interesting way to understand being a fool for Christ. Because I've seen fools for sports teams, you know, somebody whose team, they're not gonna win. You know, they're not, they're, there's no reason to like still be excited about them. Have fun, enjoy, but just know they're not going to win the championship, you know. Or I've known uh, parents who are fools for their kids, just believing in their child far past the point that is reasonable. Uh, but that belief is many times what, what pushes a person uh, to do more than maybe they believed they could before. And so it made me think how a fool for Christ is someone who stakes out a position so far into hope, so deep into faith, so constant into love, that others who were ready to give up long ago have to hope, they have to believe, they just have to love a little bit further, maybe in an effort to make fun of the fool who's still believing and hoping and loving, or maybe to get caught up in the foolishness their self. And that's what fools for Christ can do, is pull others into the foolishness with them. I'm telling you, Fool's Lutheran. Loving God, I pray to have the courage to be a fool for Christ. Help me this day to give thanks for things that others think are burdens, to point out beauty where others uh, see only ugliness and to know love where so many others may simply feel numb. 
And then give me the words and wisdom to know how to share your faith, hope, and love with those I love, with those others around me, and may our whole church uh, be fools for you, pulling, we don't even know who else, closer to you. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.